Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Boeing is cautious with Dreamliner production, SpaceX is ready to test their Raptor engine, the Red Hawk training aircraft gets more engine life. I'm Brie Cross, it's August 15th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. It looks like Boeing is keeping a close eye on the airliner market and is adjusting their inventory accordingly. According to a report from Reuters, while on the sidelines of an investor conference in New York, Boeing CFO Greg Smith said that production would only increase if the market demands it, and it's not the end of the world if production sits at 12 airplanes per month rather than increasing to 14 as is currently planned. Smith said, quote, we can still be profitable in the program as I see it today at 12. Last month, Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg said that the company would, quote, keep supply and demand in balance. According to the report, analysts said that orders for the new jetliners have been slowed by low oil prices and a series of boom years. Smith said that the company has about two years to make a decision regarding boosting output of its flagship airliner. SpaceX is preparing to test its latest rocket motor, which they have named the Raptor. Company President Gwen Shotwell said in a speech at the 30th Annual Conference on Small Satellites at Utah State University that the first such full engine had been shipped to its McGregor, Texas test facility for firing. In January of this year, the U.S. Air Force awarded a contract worth $33.6 million to develop a prototype upper stage version of the Raptor engine. The oxygen pre-burners of the engine have been tested by NASA in some 76 hot fire tests totaling about 400 seconds of firing time. The Raptor's specs have not yet been finalized, but SpaceX founder Elon Musk said last year that the engineers are targeting about 510,000 pounds of thrust, or about three times the thrust of the Merlin 1D engines currently boosting Falcon rockets. Spaceflight Insider reports that Shotwell said in her speech that the test firing would occur soon. After the break, Continental CD-135 diesel engine gets a 600 hour of life increase. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at news.net. The Red Hawk training aircraft developed by Redbird Flight has announced that the time before replacement for the CD-135 diesel engine has been increased from 1,500 to 2,100 hours. The manufacturer was able to make this lifetime extension because of key improvements, continuous testing, and field experience. The Red Hawk, which is a much upgraded revamped Cessna 172, was developed to offer a solution to the soaring prices of new training aircraft while still providing high technology. The additional 600 hours before engine replacement will have a positive effect on the total cost of operation. Redbird Flight's VP of Operations, Darren Bynes, said in part, quote, this increase in TBR puts the Red Hawk's maintenance costs on par with comparable training aircraft, allowing the operator to see much higher margins due to the impressively low fuel consumption that the diesel engine provides. Each week, we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off and Join with the Navy flight crew of this E-2C aircraft as they get that sinking feeling when the landing cable breaks. Search Cable Snaps on USS Eisenhower on YouTube. After these messages, Avro RJ Freighter is being considered. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. 
Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. BAE Systems Regional Aircraft is working towards the possible launch of a passenger-to-freighter conversion program for the Avro RJ Jetliner. They are seeking customer feedback to help assess market potential. The aircraft would carry up to 14 metric tons of cargo. The first flying AW609 prototype has arrived in Philadelphia following a recent resumption of flight testing. The involvement of the Philadelphia site in the AW609 program represents the anticipated progression towards assembly and certification with the FAA as the certification authority. AirVenture 2016 was a banner year for the Society of Aviation and Flight Educators, with a record number of instructors and pilots joining the organization and renewing memberships. The annual membership meeting dinner was sold out and attendees included top FAA and NTSB officials. The next International Space Station resupply mission by Orbital ATK has been pushed into September, according to the company. It's reported that Orbital said they need more time to inspect and test the rocket before committing to a launch date. The Minnesota man who was arrested in conjunction with the wounding of a sheriff deputy who was aboard a helicopter is facing federal charges. He has been charged with assaulting an agent, damaging a federal aircraft, and firing a gun during a violent crime. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has issued a policy statement on its proposed reduction of VORs in the U.S. The document outlines the selection criteria for VORs that may be shut down as part of the VOR Minimal Operational Network Implementation Program and United States National Airspace System Efficient Streamlined Services Initiative. The FAA convened a working group to assist in developing a candidate list for VORs for discontinuance using relevant operational safety, cost, and economic criteria. Comments for the group resulted in criteria being established to determine which VORs would be retained as a part of the minimal operational network. The FAA says the minimal operational network will enable pilots to revert from performance-based navigation to conventional navigation for approach, terminal, and en route operations in the event of a GPS outage, and it supports the NAS transition from VOR-based routes to a more efficient structure consistent with next-gen goals. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.